U.S. Cyber Command says Palo Alto Networks has a critical security vulnerability that could give a hacker easy access to the company's network. It's one of several recent warnings from the government about weak points in virtual private networks. Brigadier General Greg Tuhill, U.S. Air Force retired, president of AppGate Federal Group, former federal chief information security officer. Greg, thanks for coming on the program. People made a lot of a, a deal about the fact that um, people could use VPNs for remote working, both public and private sector. What's the vulnerability risk as people continue, and it looks like we're extending remote work for a long time? Well, a couple of things. First of all, many people uh, have equated VPNs as secure remote access. It's kind of like people think of Xerox and uh, photocopying. But as you take a look at VPNs, they premiered back in 1996, the same time that Derek Jeter of the Yankees was a rookie of the year and the Palm Pilot came out. So VPNs are really elderly technologies. And uh, frankly, uh, hackers and other malicious actors have uh, discovered a lot of vulnerabilities in them and uh, they're leveraging them in uh, the work from home environment. A gentle reminder, Greg, that the host of the program is not a big Yankees fan. So using 1996 as a capstone is probably not your best move as a guest. The question well, that- as a Red Sox fan, I, I, I get that. I'm, I'm pulling your leg, of course. Um, but what, what does this mean, though, for organizations like federal agencies that are trying to provide secure environments for their employees to work for the next who knows how long at this point? Well, I think the work from home environment is uh, uh, going to be around for quite a while, not only in the government sector, but in businesses around the world. We're seeing that uh, folks that are able to work from home really like it uh, for the most part. So having secure remote access capabilities is essential for every enterprise out there. And you want results that are effective, efficient, and secure. VPNs uh, neutralize your IDS, your intrusion detection systems, your intrusion protection systems. And, and we've seen uh, hackers and nation state actors, including during the OPM breach, leveraging some of the weaknesses in VPNs. Uh, there are alternatives uh, that are out there that are now more modern and more secure and less expensive. What, what's the technology evolution been like in the 1996 to 2020 timeframe, Greg? Well, you know, we've seen a, a shift within the techno, uh, technology community where folks are realizing that fundamental weaknesses in TCP IP, the backbone of the internet, has it where you connect first and then authenticate later. So new technologies such as software-defined perimeter technologies authenticate first and then connect uh, and only connect you to what you're authorized to see. And they provide the encrypted tunnels, the capabilities that are uh, much easier to manage, they're less complex for the user as well as the operator, and they're certainly a whole lot cheaper uh, for enterprises to implement. What happens if this um, remote work environment that we're in now extends forever? I mean, we're seeing some private sector companies saying to their employees, don't plan on coming back to the office until next summer. Some major uh, Silicon Valley companies are saying some of our employees will never come back uh, and I even read that REI, the uh, outdoor goods company, is selling headquarters that it just built because it's going to let people work in a more dispersed fashion. What's this look like from a security perspective, in your view, in 2025 or 2030? Well, I think we're already seeing the lead turn on the security uh, landscape where uh, the malicious actors are now targeting home systems. They're trying to come in through multiple paths. Uh, they realize that uh, folks have, you know, their home email systems, they're uh, sending out phishing messages, uh, trying to gain a toehold on your home systems, as well as uh, any deployed uh, laptops, desktops, whatever that your enterprise is providing. So we're seeing the, home, the actors targeting the home environment. As a matter of fact, yesterday we saw one of the older malware uh, variants uh, called uh, Agent Tesla came out with a new spin on it where it was actually looking as a keylogger for information as folks were trying to type in information about their VPNs where they could hijack that session. So we're seeing folks targeting 
vulnerabilities in VPNs. They're going after the home environments to try to gain a strategic advantage in the marketplace. We just have a couple of minutes left. I mentioned the alert from U.S. Cyber Command. We're seeing alerts from DHS, from uh, other organizations in government. Is that significant? And what should we read, if anything, between the lines of those alerts, Greg? I think we need to be paying attention. And uh, bravo to all the federal agencies. We're seeing FBI is leveraging InfraGuard, CISA, and the U.S. CERT are putting out uh, great products, uh, uh, reminding folks to keep their systems current, patch their uh, systems, and uh, keep their applications up to date in addition to the operating systems. Uh, NSA and Cyber Command have been putting out products as well. So for all of us, we should be paying attention to these things, but we should also take a look strategically and say, hey, if, if I keep on seeing vulnerabilities in elderly uh, equipment and capabilities such as VPNs, Maybe I need to start investing uh, some time and effort to look at recapitalizing to something that's more secure, it's going to cost me less, and it's going to be more effective for the environment we have in the future. Greg Tuhill, I don't get a chance to say this very often, so please today, check the standings. Thanks very much for coming on. Thanks so much. Uh, go Nats, go Rock.